everybody. Uh, welcome to another Monday morning, uh, Monday noon at the uh, Lindenberg Research Seminar. We're really delighted to have one of our own faculty members talking today, Sarah Saltzman. She goes a uh, professor in the School of Journalism, uh, which is now part of the Annenberg School of Communication and Journalism. And uh, he did his graduate work at uh, Columbia School, Graduate School of Journalism worked for CBS Television in Los Angeles uh, starting in 1964. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Before you were born. <laughs> Not quite, but uh, he has more than 50 awards that he's won over his career. Four Emmys, four Golden Mics, two Edward R. Murrah Awards, a Silver Gallop, and then N uh, NAACP Image Award. He's also the author of the book, Frank Capra, and the image of the journalist of American film. And today, he's going to talk to us about the project that he's developed and directed over the years, I don't think, uh, image of the journalist in popular culture. Joe is also turning 70 this month. Turn 70. Uh, Thanks a lot, Peter, for mentioning that. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. And I wanted to sneak that 70 in, but my wife did a fundraiser for our charity, and now the whole world seems to know. Uh, when I first started researching the image of the gay journalist in popular culture, I was told there probably wouldn't be enough material. But everyone was really wrong. If you go to the IJPC Project website, here it is at IJPC.org, you'll find a bibliography. I'll just show you really quickly. This is the page you'll come to, and you'll see there's plenty of stuff on this. But the bibliography uh, now includes more than 125 films, 35 TV programs, and 100 novels, including 16 series of novels featuring gay journalists, as well as a variety of comic books, radio shows, and other aspects of popular culture. This is a completely new field that any researcher can have a ball in, because there's so much to do that hasn't been done. Deciding what to include in the bibliography, and I'll just take that to get an idea what it looks like. Uh, <clears throat> Deciding what to include in the bibliography was a challenging job, especially when dealing with movies prior to the 1980s, when obviously gay characters were not allowed to be gay. So we relied on gay scholars and on published interviews with directors, actors, and writers deciding whether a character in such movies was gay and should be included. I didn't go on my own personal evaluation. We actually went to people who knew what they were talking about. Uh, we also included bisexuals whose relationships included both men and women. The 2009 IJPC database has more than 71,600 entries, including all of the gay journalist research done in 2008 to 2009. In the database and the website, are the definitive worldwide resources for the subject. I brought copies of the database today. If anybody wants them after the presentation, I'll be glad to give it to you. You'll find that it's an incredible resource. It looks something like this. Uh, it, when you get it, it's alphabetical. And it looks like this, but you can reorganize it by year, by title. It gives you the year, the title, the type, the reference, and then comments on what's in it. And some of the comments run 60, 70 pages now that you can just copy them and stick them into the database. So it's a quite a valuable resource. Later, I'll sum up some of the conclusions based on viewing more than 125 films and TV programs. But for now, I've put together a special 14-minute video sampling the images of gay journalists in movies and television programs. It was taken from our most ambitious project yet, a three-disc, more than four hour and 42 minute long IJPC video comp compilation called The Image of the Gay Journalist in Movies and TV, 1929 to 2009. Uh, one warning before we see the video, there is some profanity and some nudity in the more recent films. I don't want anybody to, to call up the president and get me fired. Okay, so. I our eyes. Well, if we can lower the lights. Where 
lesbian story. I demand first dibs. Oh, first dibs, first dibs, first dibs. I have given you plenty of first dibs. Like that time I gave you first dibs on the story of the rise and fall of the gay rodeo. The only thing you have ever given me is a stress-induced yeast infection. Oh, oh, oh.
choice to stay in the closet. I do. If that's what they want to do, I get it. But I don't think it's okay to kiss your boyfriend one day and then go out and trash gay people the next. I will continue to bring you more of the details of this stunning story as it unfolds. For Team 33 News, this is Emily Klein in Beverly Hills. Okay, Pat. That's fucking great. You, you were so fucking good. Look, I'm right. You were carrying the realm of men. This is the book I was out with tonight. Well, of course there was more than one. Unless the killer was a hypnotist. Beg your pardon, ma'am? It's illogical to suppose there's only one killer. The cutter is tied up. To tie them up, he'd have to put his gun down. Once he put the gun down, the cutters would run for the hills. I don't believe I know who you are. Or what? You're not going to eat. Eat the house. That's what we'll what is wrong with you? Why do you hate me so much? Well, from the first day we met, it felt personal like you had it in for me. No, I do not have it in for Yes, you do. Why can't you just do it out of deal? His name is Ryan, and he is my partner. Pardon? Yes, my partner, okay? We will we're, 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 we're together. The white boy? You think this is just a magazine? Hmm? This is not just a magazine. This is a shining beacon of hope for me. Oh, I don't know. Let's say a young boy growing up in Rhode Island with six brothers pretending to go to soccer practice when he was really going to sewing class and reading Runway under the covers at night with a flashlight. You want to talk about Swishy? Open your eyes, Mom, and look at your own Swishy stuff. Thank you for lunch. <laughs> Who's in charge of the sissy? <laughs> Did you just call me a sissy? You, you're Eric McNally. You play for the Leafs. You were a great fighter. So you got injured in that practice. Now you're on TV, so... I'm still a decent fighter. acceptance overnight. Why not? The more out you make us, the more you incite the army. Step back and quiet down. You're suggesting we should go back in the closet? Is that what you're saying? I spent more years in the closet than I care to remember. He's cute. Yeah. He's smoldering, but sensitive. Oh, all I have is my guitar, these chords, and the truth. Bon Jovi. Bon Jovi. I'm Bruno. I'm Ed Milan Fashion Week. You should go to bed. The jump thug made entirely out of our craft. You go out now. Hey. Come out of the... Take a picture of the set. Can we get the light? Okay, uh, that's an excerpt, a 14 minute excerpt out of the four hour uh, video compilation we did on the gay, image of the gay journalist. I have copies at the end of the hour. Uh, if anybody wants them, I'll, I'll be glad to give them to you if you plan to use, use them for research. In analyzing more than 125 films and TV programs, we discovered that the gay journalist is often ridiculed and used as a comic figure whose stereotypical gay characteristics are a source of either derision or buffoonery. The majority of serious gay journalists in most of the 20th century are usually bitchy columnists or bitter critics whose devastating one-liners can reduce anyone to tears or anger. They have great power, 
but usually by the last reel continue on their merry way or are defeated or even murdered. The same is true with reporters overly concerned about doing their job well and less about the perception around them that they are gay. By the late 1980s, being gay was often acknowledged in one way or another. Many plots involved the growing AIDS epidemic or the problem of being outed as a gay or the problems of being gay in any society. Interestingly enough, most of the sensitive portrayals of gays in the cinema involve films made outside the United States. With the exception of India, whose stereotypes of gay characters seem to be a staple of Bollywood. Films made in France, Italy, Poland, Hungary, Egypt, Germany, Japan, Hong Kong, Canada, and the United Kingdom are extremely sensitive and moving portrayals of both male and female gay characters. As the 20th century came to a close, continuing into the 21st century, gay journalists are accepted as being gay, and often their gayness figures prominently in the plot. For some reason, 1997 turned out to be a seminal year, previewing the next century's portrayal of gays. Rupert Everett's gay British editor in My Best Friend's Wedding and Tom Selleck's tabloid reporter in In and Out were characters the audience accepted with affection. But even as film after film featured fully realized gay characters, the ridicule of stereotypical gay characteristics continued in films, as recently as He's Just Not That Into You, which was done in 2009. Surprisingly, television programs featuring gay journalists provided far more sensitive portrayals of gay characters. Individual episodes of Night Court, Murphy Brown, Queer as Folk, Dirt, Veronica Mars and the Nanny, and continuing characters in such shows as Ugly Betty, Frasier, The Alley G, and The L Word, showed gay journalists who are not afraid or embarrassed to be gay. And the gay journalist in L Word even gets her own series in 2010. The gay journalist turns up in all forms of film genres, including horror films, action films, sci-fi and supernatural films, detective films, cartoons and comedies. There's also a PhD thesis to be written on the image of the journalist in soft and hardcore adult films. And the image of the gay journalist is no exception. All of the stereotypes associated with gays and journalists can be found in softcore or hardcore pornography featuring gay journalists. It can also be concluded that lesbians are generally treated more favorably in films and TV than gay men. With the exception of the female who displays male characteristics and is often and constantly ridiculed and assaulted in films, lesbians with feminine characteristics are among the most favorable images of gay journalists in film and television. Some of the more serious films dealing with gays show the influence of parental approval or disapproval of the gay journalist. It is easier for the female to win approval of her lifestyle than the male. Often the male gay journalist is an outcast, not only to his family, but also to his fellow workers. Public relations practitioners display all, the, all of the characteristics of the image of the public relations practitioner, as well as the image of the gay journalist in popular culture. They exhibit all of the stereotypical gay characteristics. They can be ruthless in their pursuit of power, and they often are accepted as being gay, and frequently their gayness figures in the plot. So the image of the gay journalist in films and TV is a varied collection of males and females whose sexuality is a primary factor in the plot and character development. They often have close friends of the opposite gender. They exhibit bright minds and devastating one-liners. They seem to be always looking for that significant other and seldom finding him or her. And many seem to have an enormous reservoir of understanding for people who don't understand the concept of being gay. More often than not, they appear in comedies. When they appear in dramas, there's usually heavy going involving prejudice, illness, and sometimes violence. Gay journalists seem to fare better than other gay characters, possibly because of their sense of humor, their wit, and ability to lose themselves in the stories they are working on. What I want to emphasize to you today is that the image of the gay journalist is an exciting field for future investigation. There's been virtually no research about the image of the gay journalist in popular culture. We hope to have a special supplement 
on this new research, research field, the next issue of the IJPC Journal, which is an online academic journal that adheres to the highest standards of peer review. Volume 1, Fall 2009, came out in July. And we hope to have Volume 2 out by July 2010. And I urge you students to contribute manuscripts to the IJPC Journal. Its purpose is to publish research that investigates and analyzes the conflicting images of journalists in every aspect of popular culture, film, television, radio, fiction, commercials, cartoons, comic books, music, art, theater, video games, every aspect of popular culture. And if you look into the image of the gay journalist, it's wide open and we're looking for manuscripts on that subject for the, uh, for the next issue. I'd be glad to work with any of you on a one-to-one -one basis. Uh, being an editor of the journal, I do have some idea of what we're looking for, but a peer review means they're blind. The people on the editorial board cannot be influenced by anyone. They just look at the manuscript and they decide whether it should be published. And the truth is that I would say every manuscript we published in the first issue went through at least four revisions. So it's not an easy process, but once you get into it, it can be used for future employment, tenure, when you get a job and all sorts of great things. I wanted to keep this fairly short because I thought you might have a lot of questions and uh, I'd, I'd be glad to answer any question on either the image of the gay journalist in popular culture or the image of the journalist in popular culture. Anybody have any questions? You know, I could talk for two hours by myself. Yeah, Larry. Well, I'm familiar with research on the image of gay. It seems to me that the image of the journalist, and this is sort of the larger project, other than the common fact of being some kind of journalist, it would, it would seem to me, it was, it could be wrong, that, that the dramatic use of a journalist in, in, in creating a narrative would often, I would imagine, have the outsider role, not in all cases, but one of the ways in which I can see using a journalist is somebody who has that particular role of commenting on seeing, being behind the scenes, being able to play an investigative role so you can open up a, a narrative. And that also often is the way in which gay characters are used, not the same kind of outsider, but generally someone who is an outsider. In most of the clips you show, the journalist part didn't seem to be foregrounded. Right. I mean, it was the game part that was foreground, so that it looked a lot like a series of clips on gay images in television and film. Right. The, the question I really have is, is the, are there places in which that coincidence of, of outsider-ness, as opposed to, you know, the figure of ridicule, so like in front page, right. Right. and many others, it's, you know, it's a convenient joke. It's, you don't even have to say gay, and there was that whole period, as you noted, in which they never would say it, but they sure could signal it so the audience knew exactly what was being said. But is there a way in which you get this kind of double outsider-ness, or is it just a dramatic gimmick that gets used as it does often? No, that's very perceptive, as I would expect, as you study this. The, the, the situation in the four-hour video shows a lot more journalism. When you're trying to pick clips, it was very difficult pick a short clip because what you really want to see is, is the thing develop. And you're right, journalists are used in gay movies, the gay journalists exactly as they're used in other movies, uh, as a form, as a person that asks the questions the audience wants to know, as a person that moves the plot along. So you have a lot of that. But in most films, many films that feature the journalists in popular culture, in cinema, television, whatnot, the journalism is sometimes left behind after five minutes. Uh, the film will start out in the newsroom, the journalist will, will be working, and then they'll go on in a private, dramatic sh uh, show that has very little to do with the actual journalism. That happens frequently in the gay movie. Uh, and a couple of gay movies that were very prominent, I mean, in the literature, everybody said, oh, this is something you have to include. I could not find the journalism. I mean, and there's one, a marvelous film uh, about a, 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 gay, a gay person who is apparently a food critic. In all the reviews, he's a food critic. In the book, it's based on, there are chapters with him, food critic. Try to find a scene. I found one little scene where it looked like he was in the newsroom saying, I have to go to an appointment. So often, journalism isn't even prominent in the film. And that's true with all of the gay films. Uh, I find it amusing, though, that 
all of the stereotypes of the journalists you can find with the gay journalists, and I'm sure uh, it, those of you who look into the gay li the literature on gay characters will find that many of the characteristics of the gay characters, the stereotypical ones, are found in these films as well. Yeah, and uh, how does Clifton Webb get in there in Laura? Because the character in the, in the film, right. I mean, his love for, for Laura it's is... Obsessive. The, well, yeah, that's the point of the plot. The and, reason, and, and yeah. the murder and all and all of that. Now, the fact that Clifton Webb was gay, right. and the fact that he plays him in that, right. you know, sort of traditionally stereotypic way, yeah. but he's still not. The reason I included him was there's uh, two books out on the cinema of the gay cinema of, of the 20th century. Both not only say this is an absolutely pure gay character, regardless of the lines they give him that he's obsessive about women, and even if he is, they say that still is a, a cover up. Uh, they, and there's an interview with Clifton Webb, I believe Otto Preminger directed it, I'm not quite yeah, sure about that. And they both said, the director and Clifton Webb both said they sat down, they said, this is a gay character, we're playing him gay, and the people who will know will appreciate that, and the people who don't won't, that's why I included him. The same problem I had with All About Eve. Oh, yeah, no, He's I a womanizer. Yeah. But again, in all of the literature you read, this is a, a typical gay character. I mean, that is you know? part of the interesting point is that you have available this characterization which you then can do in a way where the plot itself denies it. Sometimes it's just vague. Right. But Very they're as central as Sanders or Webb are. And they'll throw in scenes of them with women. Uh, oh yeah, no. Just I mean, to in make in sure. In both cases the plot depends right. on their presumed right. heterosexuality. So I, as I said, films before 1980 I took dramatic license and what I would include, although the desert song is there's no confusion about him and there's no That's confusion. Right, there's no confusion with the big news uh, with her dressed up like that. So you made a comment that was interesting about the women, the gay women journalists were some of the most positively right. portrayed people in the depiction of journalists overall. But you said, but especially they had feminine characteristics. Right. Right. This is so interesting, this sort of, it's a similar discussion. There's so many layers about them because journalists, you know, are supposedly part of such a macho world, but maybe a it gets very confusing because yeah. you're right. In the 30s, women act, had to act like men, drink like men, right. and be rough. In fact, the highest praise you could give a woman in a 1930s film is to kind of, you know, hit her on the chin lightly and say, "Well, you may not be a great newspaper woman, but you sure are a great newspaper man." And right. That would so be you the take highest. One step right. from that to right. the more sort of stereotypical gay woman right. that, that you know it's only a short step, right? Right. But then you add on the the uh, lesbian journalists who are who don't have much trouble in the film, who seem to be able to adapt and people seem to accept them, are usually fashion columnists, food columnists, typical female areas of the newspaper in the old days. They tend not to be the hard-hitting reporters who go out after criminals or who cover courts or who cover fires. You know, do the typical job of journalists. They tend to be on on the magazine writers, most of them are magazine writers, and, and the magazines are art mag magazines or, or uh, fashion magazines, so that may be a bit of it. They always, of course, are with a woman who is more masculine and is in a more traditional journalist role, perhaps, yeah. or not in journalism at all. You know. Has that, did, did, did you see much of an evolution of that over the years of looking at the woman? That's a hard question because it's so hard in pre-1980 to really figure out which films. I mean, two, if you watch a Fred Astaire movie and two women come up and kiss and start dancing together, does that make them gay? I mean, it, it got well beyond my qualifications for sure. <laughs> and I had to rely on these two books and on the literature to figure out what films I really should include. The other problem I had is that a lot of the gay uh, journalists, a lot, many gay journalists are on really hardcore pornography. <coughs> And trying to find a clip on journalism in those is very difficult. <laughs> Let me tell you, that is a very difficult assignment. Because the journalism is, uh, there's, there was one scene where a female journalist uh, it does, her di does her article between, how shall I put this, between segments. And so I would go, I would get that piece and I, I'd fast forward through the, yeah. the segment and then I'd come back and get another one. So it would be, it was, it sounds like fun, but it really was very, very, tedious and difficult to do. <laughs> yes, Did you uh, come across many depictions of uh, 
open discriminations against skis and news business, say like in the Abe Rosenthal era of the New York Times? I, the films aren't that specific. Usually the journalists are complaining that they're not being given the chance, that they feel that people are looking at them and giving them only stories on, on gay issues. There's one film where the reporter complains to a significant other that he's tired of covering gay stories. He wants to be a journalist. He doesn't want to be a gay journalist. So there's some of that, but as far as, uh, there are very few films that show gays being treated poorly inside the newsroom that I could find where you actually see them being, uh, because by the time the gays are known as gays, we're into the uh, late 20th century and 21st century. You got Tom Selleck, the man's man, I mean, you know, Magnum P.I., kissing uh, another very popular actor, uh, Kevin, uh, Kevin Klein, and people accepted that. It was amazing. That was 1997. So by the time we get there, I think it was politically incorrect to, to, uh, to treat people differently in the newsroom, whether they were gay or a person of color or a woman. Things were changing a bit. But Selleck's character isn't openly gay. Oh yeah, he is. No, no. In the in the narrative of the film, he is. But as yeah. as as the uh, journalist, he's not. The journalist he plays. Oh, he's a TV not, reporter, is right? Not openly gay in his journalism world. Right, that's true. He's like a People magazine or anything. A TV. Like, like, yeah. He's an entertainment type right. reporter, right. but he's not openly gay. Right. Although he does come out on camera. Yes, that's right. the part of the narrative. Right. In fact, uh, when he first meets Kevin Klein, there's no indication that he is gay. So you all be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's, a, it's a fascinating topic, and w what it really needs is more research. Yeah. I, I barely touched it. One way I would put the to this is there's been a change since the 1980s, you know, say, since you know, the Rosenthal era, if you like. There are a lot more openly gay journalists now than there used to be. You know, right. and, NLGJA was launched in 1990, 91, mm -hmm. which, yeah, it was around. It was the ASNI meeting, I think, in 90. Was it 90? When, I was out in 1991. So that's a recent period. But again, most of the sort of cases you can think of of openly gay journalists are not openly gay as journalists. Mm -hmm. and now, I'm not sure how you would be. I mean, right. gender is often communicated in an obvious way, and race is often communicated in an obvious way, but sexual orientation for all these reasons. You know, it's not. So it's a tricky question, and this came up dramatically in the New York Times in the case of Jeffrey Schmalt, who sort of came out in the most dramatic way by collapsing on the newsroom. Um, and, but he was then assigned a gay beat, you know, and wrote about it uh, in the Times, he was also docked, so it was you know, kind of very, very dramatic. But a lot of journalists who came out, you know, Dudley Clinton, you know, Adam McGorney, and others who had been, you know, in a sense, closeted, and then came out, you wouldn't know it from, from reading it. And I don't know whether the answer is you should know it. I mean, that's good. I'm sure one of the big debates in, in journalism is about whether personal characteristics should or shouldn't be read from their work. And people of color have always complained when they get a job that they're giving, given stories just involving people of color. This is not just related to gays. It involves anybody who is hired and is different than the white male establishment. I mean, women for years, it, you couldn't do anything but fashion, food, that kind of stuff. There were exceptions, of course. But. Yeah, so that, so the, the, the question I think I have is, yeah. to what extent does the kind of research on the image of the journalist popular culture, the way in which we all learn about journalists through popular culture, feed back, if it does, into the way in which journalists then are inclined to or allowed to behave. I mean, is there a kind of process here of building an expectation that journalists should be able to or should want to be, you know, sort of self-visible, self-reflexive in a way that, that is not, uh, you know, sort of not encouraged or not normative? I mean, the presumption, of course, is that the heterosexual white male is the norm from which everything else deviates, and therefore nobody should ever say anything about what they are because you can take it for, for granted. Well, you know, one of the, this is interesting. Back in the 70s, I produced a show called It Takes All Kinds for CBS, and we did the first, I, I think it was the first time anybody tried this, we got gay men who didn't look like gay men. They were lawyers, they were doctors, they were 
dressed like, they, they looked like anybody else, not the stereotypical gay person. And we had them just talk for a half hour, intercut very carefully. And it was quite explosive because a lot of people couldn't believe that these people were gay. And one of the things they were saying is what TV has to do, they were saying on the show, is to show gays in all walks of life, not just these stereotypical characters. It was so successful that a lesbian group approaches that, well, why don't you do, we'd like to do one. And we did one on women as well. And, and uh, as far as I know, that was never followed up. But one of the things I think this kind of research does is it shows the different kinds of images, not just of journalists, but of gay journalists that the public is experiencing. And, and it's interesting to figure out how that would affect their perception, not only of journalists, but also of gay people. The journalists tend to be more verbal, more witty. Uh, they tend to be doing interesting things. Uh, some of them, as I say, you, you know they're gay, but they're involved in solving a murder. Or like any, any, any uh, film you've seen with journalists, they're involved in exciting stories. They're doing some interesting things. And so you're watching that. They also seem to be always looking for somebody. Uh, I've never seen anything like this. I mean, every film, it's a big issue finding the right person. And they go through a series of horrible experiences before maybe at the end finding the right person. And often they don't. Uh, and I think uh, someone who isn't gay can, can appreciate that because everybody has that problem trying to find a significant other, whether you're gay or not. So I think it also broadens appreciation of a group of people that have been ridiculed and slandered and libeled and treated terribly through most of our history. I think that's another reason why it's interesting to look at this. Because you can see, it's, it's a, I would say the primary images are fairly positive. Uh, there are the villains, there are the people that do terrible things, but, but basically you say, oh, gee, you know, that, that's kind of a nice person. Now the issue of gay marriage comes before me and maybe I'm thinking of those images. So well, they, these people are really great people. Why am I fighting this? So I think that's the kind of stuff that I think is interesting about this. Yeah. Um, this may be, you know, it's just on my limited life experience, but it seems to me that like you're saying the late 90s, I don't know when the Ellen show, when that whole thing happened, but there was like a big shift from right. you can't do this on television to every show has, a, not every show, but there's gay characters everywhere and it's normal and it's fine. Just on TV, I don't know about movies or other, other things, and I'm curious whether this journalistic lens, whether that, I mean maybe that's just a misperception, but whether this shift from it's a taboo that is talked about in code to it's normal to have these characters in fiction, is that, is there any, do you see that with the, the journalists at all? Well, let, let me tell you, fiction was way ahead of the pace. Novels, I mean, you, you can go back to the 60s and 70s, but you can find novels that treat the whole gay experience from a journalistic standpoint, from a gay standpoint, really quite well. And as I said, there's 16 series of novels where the gay journalist is a continuing character. And sometimes they go eight or nine books. So I think uh, TV movies, as usual, were late to the game. The novels really were way ahead of this, even back in the 30s and 40s. So that's, I think, important to know. But in television, a lot of them were taking some of these novels and making them into movies. One of the things that was driving me crazy is I get email at all hours of the day saying, oh, do you have the Ellen show? And I'd write back, I don't think there's a journalist. I'm not doing it on gay characters. I'm doing it on gay journalists, which became kind of a problem because you think of all of these great shows of movies, televisions, that were important for gay people, but they didn't have a journalist in it who was gay, so it became a, a kind of a tricky thing to do. This is a very small piece of this kind of research. Larry's research is much more uh, inclusive and much more meaningful, really, in, in, in that area. All I'm interested in doing the image of the journalist of popular culture is not just the gay journalist, but I want people to help me on the African-American journalist, the image of the African-American journalist, the image of the Hispanic journalist. The image, we've done the image of the female journalist. We've done the image of the broadcast journalist. You find fascinating things, not just about journalism, but about the society in which this thing takes place. And the thing that also amazed me, I, I point out in my, in my uh, speech, is that the foreign films were way ahead of the game on treating gays in a sensitive, meaningful manner. There's a wonderful film with, uh, with Sophia Loren and uh, Marcello uh, Mastriani, where he is, it's during Nazi Germany, and he's a, he's a commentator on the radio, and he's being deported probably for death because he's gay. Now, this film was, is very well done, and it stars two of your major Italian stars, and that was way ahead of what America was doing. And, 
and you can find a wonderful films in, in a Polish film. I can't remember the name off the top of my head, but it was wonderful to show how authorities were clamping down on this gay journalist because she was gay and she was also a journalist. And she was saying things that were unpopular, but, and she was also a gay, which was taboo. In fact, they find her kissing a woman on a park bench. They send the woman home because she's married. But since the journalist isn't married, they hold her as the culprit and they, and they put her in jail for X amount of days. So it's a very interesting thing for me that the foreign films were more sensitive to this subject than the American films, and also television. There's a tradition uh, in storytelling up until maybe the 80s in which transgressive behavior by the end is punished. Right. So, uh, you know, Anna Karenina under a train and uh, <laughs> advising consent, the guy's hanging from a rope. Right. Uh, was that the case going back and, uh, through these images? Do, do bad things happen to gay journalists? Well, again, we have to define, defining a gay journalist like Clifton Webb, who does get killed at the end, and uh, is very difficult. There isn't that kind of retribution because most gay characters before the 1980s were mostly comic relief. They were treated, they, they kind of just walked through a scene and the audience would know, oh, that's a funny kind of person. And they, that's a homosexual, they didn't use the word gay then. Uh, so you don't really see them punished in that way. But interestingly enough, as they become gay, they do get punished in very terrible ways, not because they do anything wrong, but because the society just cannot take it. They, they get beaten up. They get, of course, they, when the AIDS epidemic comes, they die in terrible ways. Uh, so there's a lot of that, but not because they were bad people, but because uh, the society considered just being gay bad. Uh, and that, that's, that's very sad to watch. Um, oh, yeah, Tom. This, this may be a follow-up in a sense on the question Larry has asked, and so you may have already answered it as well as you can. But it seems to me, just as a casual observer of the way journalists are portrayed, that more recent depictions of journalists are more sharply negative, more hostile than they would have been in an earlier era. Um, so I guess my question is, do gay journalists, because they're the other, are you saying they escape some of this hostility? And if they escape it, when you point out that you know feminized lesbian lipstick lesbians escape it, is that just because of the male fantasy about lesbian attractive lesbian sex versus the ick factor of you know men having sex, or is there something unique about their role as journalists? First, let me get rid of what you said at the very beginning. There has been virtually no difference in the way journalists have been treated since. 19th century up to today. So the perception that they're being treated more negative now is wrong. In fact, there's a 1929 film called Five Star Final, which is the most vicious portrayal of a journalist I've ever seen. And, and uh, what's happened is that if there's a general template, if a journalist is the star of the film or the second star of the film, it's usually a very favorable portrayal. If they're down the list where you don't even know who they are half the time, or it's journalist number one, or TV reporter number two, it's usually very negative. And you see a lot of that, so it kind of colors the way you think about it. Uh, gay journalists really fit in that same category. Uh, if they're a minor character, they're usually treated with ridicule or, or as just a villain. But if they are the principal character in the movie, they're usually treated with, with a fairly, fairly favorable uh, image. And in fact, uh, I, knew, I don't know that much about gay literature, and I came into this fairly cold, and I was very moved by some of these films, The Point of Tears, because they did such a, a moving portrayal of what this person was going through through no fault of their own, just because they were labeled gay, just like if you're labeled this or that. It's, you know, that's very painful to all of us, I think. But to see it on the screen, and some of the acting was quite good. Some films I've never heard of, uh, some films uh, that I don't think many of you in the room will, if you, if you look at the compilation, you know, you see the compilation of the image of the broadcast journalist or the female, you know most of the films. Uh, I ordered 130 films from Amazon, and I had maybe seen three of them. And the rest uh, were just films that I had located through Google and other, when people had told me about one. And the TV shows, I, I was amazed how many TV shows featured a gay character in an episode. And I think if you look at the video compilation, those are really hilarious and very well done. And also revealing and hope, and all very positive about gay journalists. It's all very positive. Sit situation comedies tend to be positive. There's a show called uh, Cold Case. I don't know if you watch it. It's still on. 
But they have had a lot of shows that have been very favorable to gay journalists because they go back in time and they can show various things. And they've been extraordinarily powerful uh, shows on the gay experience. But Tom's other point was an interesting one. I think to pursue, I, I do assume that the preference for the feminine oh, characteristics right. in the gay women journals, which wouldn't necessarily go along with the characteristics we would expect of journalists, right? Well, surveys okay. show surveys show that lesbian lesbians are, are more readily acceptable than gay men. I mean, that's that's well, a very common. Part of the question, as Tom was pointing out, the more feminine yeah. lesbian journalists might be more accessible. Well, it's a male. I think the male fantasy is true. I think it's true. Males, uh, pornography, males are more acceptable. You, you see any pornography, you, get, you can have a lesbian scene. Pornography, you very seldom see man on man. And, and, and acceptable, well, acceptable is the wrong word there. In pornography that the majority of men watch. All of which I think makes the point that Tom was sort of implying, which is that the people who are running these shows are usually men. Yeah, that's so probably true. Probably. But you know, a lot, of it, uh, a lot of the new films are done by females. And I've, I haven't known, like the L Word, you watch, have you all seen the L Word, which is a very popular series? I'm not sure that some of that isn't in there. Uh, you know, some of that, if, if a woman is more feminine, she, it's more acceptable uh, to watch that. I mean, you get some of the big stars in that show are all leading female actors uh, who are very good looking. There are very few ugly women, <laughs> which is the way movies and TV are done, but you would think it. Did they? Yeah, I mean, it, what I like about that show <laughs> you know, as you know, but I loved it. Yeah. But the women in that show to me sort of ran the gamut of the community. Okay. And so that's why I think was so great about that show. It's like from butch to androgynous to feminine to gamut. But, but the reporter is a basic right. uh, good looking woman. There, there were a bunch of reporters actually in that show. Yeah, that's true. Really that's true. Yeah, that's um, true. I was interested in, in Mary's point on, um, on gay reporters on the gay right. community or gay right. issues. And I, I, I wanted to, to kind of get your take. I, I, some would argue that it's an issue of authenticity, that only someone who understands the community can really report on the community. I would, I would argue that um, you don't necessarily have to be a member of that community to, to report on that community. And the best journalism I've seen is, is people who, 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 who don't even have a relationship at all with that. Um, so uh, is there any sense of that? And this crosses issues of, of race, gender, all kinds of you know, economic status, all kinds of things. Is that, is that an issue that comes up? Well, to, to just answer that question by first saying I fought that all my life because when I did a, a documentary on rape, now pick the, the fact that a male was producing a documentary. I did a documentary on African Americans. Everybody said it can't be done because you're not African American. So I think a good reporter can cover anything. But in the movies, most of these gay journalists do not cover gay stories. They cover antiques. They cover gardening. They cover gay food. Stories. They cover fashion. <laughs> but very few, well, unless they're a gay columnist, where they're in the, for example, the, the clip I took from Milk, uh, those journalists run a gay newspaper. They're covering gay issues. Uh, so there are some of those. But basically, most of these films, as I say, a journalist, journalism is a very minor part of it. They're not coming out and, and saying, oh, we've got to do this, we've got to do that. Now, there are other films where they are taking the lead in informing the public about gay issues. They're, they're real uh, advocates of this. And they do. the film revolves around how they're being punished in the newspaper or, wherever, or the TV station for talking too much about gay issues. You know, you've got to be a journalist. You can't be an advocate. And they get and they get uh, kicked out for that reason or demoted or not treated very well by their boss. Yeah. Uh, John, I'm curious, um, touch a little bit more on, on sort of the timing with um, uh, Roy Ahrens and the National Lesbian and Gay Journalists Association. And maybe going a little bit, was that a definitive time? Was there any difference? before and after, kind of you know, pre-Stonewall, post-Stonewall kind of thing with that? Well, I, think, with NLGJA, yeah. or I think Larry hit upon it. In the 90s, suddenly people started talking about this. People weren't uh, scared about coming out. You know, before that, you would come out, you could lose your job, you could lose your career, you could lose everything. And so they, were, they didn't want to do that. And there was a clip you might remember from the, the, uh, the musical, I forget, Cop, Cop, no, Cop, no, Cop Rock, uh, in which this, this guy 
is trying to out the judge's assistant. And he's saying, look, uh, this is just, he's just a casualty of war. So she turns it around on him, and you can see it in the full compilation. She turns around and says, well, blackmails him because his lover doesn't have a green card. And so she says to him, you print, you print the story about my assistant, and this guy is on a plane back to Mexico or whatever the country was within five minutes, and scares him enough so he doesn't write the story. Now this was, Cop Rock I think was early 90s, I'm not sure about the date, Sorry, maybe later 80s. Yeah, it went on for five minutes and then went off. But uh, that's the kind of stuff you would see back then. Then you could, 1997, which is the year for some reason that this happened, you have two very popular comedies, which the gay person is gay. And doesn't and doesn't in fact is the gayness is made part of the of the plot uh, in a for in uh, my best friend's wedding it's made it's, it's it's got a lot of scenes where his gayness is part of the humor but not in a stereotypical way that makes him look stupid or anything but he's very smart he's very interesting and the same thing with Tom Selleck as Larry points out he comes out at the end of the film you know that that was fairly novel for 1997 now we're 2009 and I don't think if somebody says they're gay anywhere. Uh, certainly in urban Los Angeles, that they're going to be uh, have a big problem. Right? They work on yeah. You really don't? You think they would? Very, very, very few people in front of the camera who are openly gay, yes. Uh, and certainly well, in entertainment. Well, I'm thinking of CNN uh, coming out and, and yeah. not having any repercussions to his career. Yeah, but those still say... <coughs> Anderson Cooper yeah, Anderson has never come out. Are you sure? Because I, he hasn't come out I watched Regis and Kelly and he was talking about it. They don't come out. Absolutely. Anybody else you want to help today? <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe I'm wrong on that. I'm not an expert on that. I'm not an expert on that. You think it's still a problem? <laughs> That's sad. There is one question. Are you going to, as journalism is changing so radically mm -hmm. these days, I mean, separate topic, does that begin to show up in popular culture? I asked Marty whether you now got the image of the blogger in well, popular culture. In fact, the, the database. The new roles beginning to show right, up. The database that I have that I ended in July 2009, you have to have a cutoff date, or it would go on forever as it does, uh, has about 300 references to internet reporters, whether they be in fiction or in the movies, bloggers. For example, I include Gossip Girl. Everybody thinks it's crazy, but she's a blogger who exposes a lot of people and performs the role of a gossip columnist in the new era. So there's a lot of that. Ghost, uh, I can't remember the name of it. It's on Friday night. It's before Medium. Ghost uh, Whisperer. Yeah. There was about five or six episodes where a blogger was integral into that plot and they're in the database. So yeah, we, we, we keep up with that as the new media comes in. Thank you, Joe. Thank you very much. Thank you.